What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about Linux Mint, but a very special edition of Linux Mint. Before we go diving into this video, I have a few questions for you. Are you broke? Do you have an old computer? Do you wanna breathe life into your old computer and give it to your brother or sister? If the answer to any one of these questions is yes, and well, I am broke too, so I guess we're in the same boat, Let's talk about Linux Mint XFCE Edition. This has helped me a lot, and I do believe this is gonna help you too. So let's dive right in. Now, the moment you log into Linux Mint, you're gonna be greeted by a welcome dialog box. This is very cool. Welcome to Linux Mint. Welcome to your new operating system. Let's go. They have a few things, which is desktop color, system snapshot, driver manager, update manager, system settings, software manager, and firewall. If you are a person who has already used Linux Mint, the Cinnamon Edition, this is going to look very familiar, but there are a few key differences between this version and that, so stick around to the end of the video to find out. Let's go ahead and change some desktop colors. So right off the bat, we can see that this is very different. Over there, we used to have a completely different icon. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can check my video on Linux Mint. Cinnamon Edition, they just dropped with Cinnamon 6. You're gonna love the video. But let's continue on with our tour for today. We have different styles, Advaita, Advaita Dark, High Contrast. I'm not gonna mess a ton with these settings because I really like what I have going on here or maybe I'll change it to darker orange. It looks good, but on my TN panel, not that great. It kind of looks muddy, so let's just pick a different color, maybe mint ale dark blue. And this looks pretty good. I am jarred by the appearance of a white border, but it is what it is. And we can also set an XM, XFWM4 theme if there's one, so I guess we could enable that. Under icons, you get a ton of options. I'm not sure why they have a warning next to them. Let's go ahead and expand this menu real quick. And let's let's see what they say. This icon theme has no cache file. You can create one by running GTK update in a terminal emulator. Okay, we're not gonna worry about that. Let's just go ahead and pick a, a color theme which we're gonna like. Let's go with mint. L purple and I'm not sure if it added that so okay I, the color has changed this is purple I like the fact that this is dark but I really don't like that this top bar is absolutely silver in color let's try some other color maybe let's say mint E I like green the best with black so let's just go ahead with that you have system snapshots so if you mess with your computer you can roll back to an earlier version of your operating system with everything like the files and system settings and everything. So it's gonna be really easy if you mess up your computer. So this Linux operating system, Linux Mint, is very well-rounded and you're not gonna have any problems. Even if you mess up, we have two systems. Either you can go with ButterFS or rsync. You click on next, it estimates the system file size, and this is what it looks like after it estimates your disk size. You can create a, a system snapshot. I'm not gonna do that now, but you get the idea. Okay, you also have driver manager for uh, installing drivers that are not available. Update manager, which you can see right over here. And actually it has a few updates, I think, but we're not gonna update as we are running inside a VM, but again, everything you need. You don't even need to go to the terminal. You have everything right here. System settings, we can launch system settings, so let's go ahead and do that. Wow, this looks a lot different from Cinnamon, but I kind of dig the appearance. I mean, it doesn't take much time to get used to the white top bar, so let's not complain and let's go beyond, uh, let's go beyond the surface level things, right? So inside personal, you have about me, appearance, desktop, desktop settings, notifications, panel, window manager, window manager, tweaks, and workspaces. So I guess you could change workspaces too, which is very interesting. I think we've already checked out appearance. So this is gonna be the exact same thing and we can go back to all settings by clicking on this button. 
desktop settings will lead us to the window manager and the applications where there is dark mode and let apps decide. So we can force dark mode on all the apps uh, and we can override individual app preferences. You have the XFCE panel, which I guess is the bottom panel. This is this would be very familiar to you if you've used Windows in the past, which I guess you have. And let's go through, uh, let's leave the settings aside. Let's just go through what the panel looks like. So at the left, you have a start menu. You have your favorites, recently used, all applications, accessories, graphics, internet, multimedia, office setting system. So overall, as you can see, this is a very complete system. You have a few apps and you have whatever applications that you have open shown up in a Windows XP style. And at the right hand corner, you have your notifications, you have your clipboard, I'm assuming, or some system reports. Actually, this is not the clipboard. So this would like something, if, if it needs your attention, it's gonna pop up. I'm not sure what it is, but I'm not gonna bother with it right now. You have your update manager, which I showed you. You have your connections and your computer settings. I'm not exactly sure what this is, but you have a presentation mode and you have settings. So when the power button is pressed, when sleep button is pressed. Okay, so they do different things depending on what you set the buttons to do. You have a system setting, so you can set the system to sleep mode. You have display, so basically power manager settings. So these are very handy and I really love how they've put everything in the same place. Very easy to get you're not gonna get lost. You have a volume slider and a clock and date and time with the calendar. All right, so overall, this is how the Linux distribution looks like. We're gonna go ahead and change the wallpaper, but before that, we're gonna see that this menu looks a little bit different if you've used Cinnamon. It definitely has a clean vibe to it, and I really love the, love the icons over here. If you click on desktop backgrounds, it opens up slowly and you have a ton of options. All of these wallpapers look really good. Let's go ahead and pick one up. Wow. I mean, I've used a ton of Linux distros. My favorite one is Pop! OS, but I really am on the fence about that just because the wallpapers in Linux Mint are very good. Now you can argue that I can get these wallpapers from the GitHub repository, but Overall, as a first impression to somebody who's maybe very young, whose first impression to Linux is in the hands of Linux Mint, the wallpapers that Mint provides, you can go you can go with them for days and not be bored. You don't even need to go to the internet for wallpapers. You have everything that you might need right here. All of these wallpapers look extremely professional, extremely beautiful, and I am floored by the quality of the wallpaper game that Linux Mint team strives to meet. It's just really phenomenal. Let's pick one and let's not uh, waste time anymore over here because we have work to do. Let's also talk about the software center because if you're using the system, you might want to know what kind of software you can install, right? So let's go to the software manager and let's look at some of the things. So one software manager actually shows up. It takes a little bit of time to generate the cache, but now we're good to go. You can see you have everything you can imagine. You have Discord, VLC, Spotify, Visual Studio Code. You have different categories, accessories, fonts, games, and maybe you can also install WhatsApp and plenty of other software really. So you are not gonna be uh, left out if you're using something like Linux Mint XFCE Edition this would cover pretty much every need of yours. So the main reason why you would want to use XFCE for Linux Mint is that after giving you a tour, I'm hoping that you get an, an, an idea of how the Linux Mint desktop environment uh, with XFCE really operates. And now the real meat of the video is that I'm gonna show you why XFCE is important and more important to you than Cinnamon is because you would want to go over to the task manager. So once you open task manager, you're going to be greeted by these two panels, these two graphs. On the left, you can see the CPU utilization, which is averaging 
at about, I would say, 5 to 6%. It fluctuates a little bit depending on if I move my mouse. Because, again, this is a very, very old computer. I am on a Skylake laptop with 16 gigs of RAM and an SSD installed. I have allocated about 6 gigs of RAM to this VM, and it's using up about 1.1 gigabytes, which is 19% of what I have allocated it. This is a very dynamic system. I used Linux Mint with Cinnamon on a 2009 Core 2 Duo, and I used to attend Teams meeting from that computer. And it would do all these extremely well without dropping a beat. The only time that it would start to lag is if I tried to screen record with OBS installed. Obviously, it was not meant to handle that, so it faltered, and I really, really cannot blame the system for that. XFCE, if you're using this, this is by no means a miracle operating system that's going to turn your old potato into a new potato pie or something. It's still going to be a potato, but a potato that you can use for longer and you can defer buying that, that new laptop that you've been wanting to for at least a few months to a few years and it gives you the time to save up crucial system resources that you would have to spare on something like Chrome or Firefox or any other app that you might use. So that's the whole shtick behind why you should stick to XFCE instead of Cinnamon. Again, as I said, I have used Cinnamon myself because I prefer that and I got away with it. So you may as well too, but if you use XFCE, there is a higher chance that your laptop or your old PC gives you a little bit of that extra performance that you can put into other applications. So that was the whole point of this entire video. Linux Mint XFCE edition looks very close to the to the Cinnamon edition, and I really like what they've done with the system, even though there is a little discrepancy between the themes and that is okay at the end of the day as long as you're able to get real work done which in linux mint you will be able to i really don't think looks matter that much anyway with that we come to the end of this video thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you on the flip side peace